Hello everybody. Um, so my name is uh, Saurav Prasad and I'm one of the technical marketing engineers working on the Cisco Epic Enterprise module. And of course, uh, you must have heard a lot about uh, our next generation DNA center software and that's a lot of that is going to be running on top of the Epic EM, which is our controller for the DNA architecture. So um, I'll be focusing on the APIs that we currently expose uh, from the APKM point of view, uh, but of course they will also be uh, something which is going to be exposed on top of the data center. Uh, because right now I want to show you what we currently have, which is shipping. The DNA center product is of course not shipping yet. It's in the EFT trials right now. Uh, this is something which you'll, if you go download the APKM today, you should be able to get access to all of these APIs. So let's talk about some of these APIs. Uh, so this is the DNA architecture. I'm I'm sure you have seen this. I mean, a lot of times today. Uh, but what is unique here is at every layer we have APIs that are exposed. Uh, so from so Kevin just talked about all of the APIs that that we're exposing from the device side, um, and of course from the controller side as well. So we have APIs at um, all the levels, and these are open extensible APIs um, from the controller. These are REST APIs that we're exposing today, um, and. Uh, the southbound interaction between the controller and the network devices, uh, it will depend on the type of network devices. So in some cases, it's a SNMP, CLI based. In a lot of the cases, we are slowly, gradually moving over to the NetConf with the Yang models. Uh, so that's happening uh, because, of course, we, ha we do have a lot of brownfield devices in our networks today, uh, which might not have the latest software. So we still continue to have uh, for some device types, you know, uh, CLI and SNMP talking. Uh, but from a northbound, everything is REST-based, and they're all, uh, I mean, available. So the APKM, all of its functionality is exposed by APIs. Now, uh, if you have used APKM, and I'm sure a lot of uh, the, the people who are listening would have used it, we have applications for everything already, right? So for EasyQoS, we showed that last year. Uh, Part Trace, Plug and Play, IVAN, all of that is there. We have built-in applications. So the question becomes, why do we need APIs here? Um, so w one of the main things is automation, right? So of course, all of the applications that we are building on the APKM, uh, so the part trace, inventory, and whatnot, they're all using these same APIs. So it helps with automation. And at the same time, even though you, we have an application built in, uh, so if you have a user interface, APIs help. So for example, you take plug and play. You have, you have a new site coming up, or you have 100 sites coming up, 500 devices. Do you really think you are going to input via your user interface, 500 different serial numbers, and say, okay, here are the here's the config file for each of them. Now, if you have an API, you can write a small Python script. It does all of that for you automatically. It's fairly simple to do. We have a lot of customers using that. Um, so that's one automation use case. Similarly, there's an integration use case. So now, APKM in itself is able to manage some of the uh, your the Cisco network devices. But what happens where you want to integrate with, say, Microsoft Skype for business? Uh, or say info blocks for some getting the IP pools. We need APIs for that. So we need some um, you know, in integration uh, use cases. So we have a lot of integration use cases where we use APIs. And I'll talk about some of them. And lastly, innovation. So although we have APIs, we have uh, apps built using those APIs, but say if you are uh, looking at EasyCoS, for example. Now EasyCoS has support for you know, driving policies or configuring policies on the network. But we don't have support for time-based policies, for example. So if you want to have a certain policy from 1 p.m. in the afternoon to 4 p.m., there is no way you can do it in easy cost. But again, we have APIs for all of those easy cost functionality. You can write your own application and do all of that, uh, you know, uh, or, or put all of that rules in there. So that's something which we are doing for both, um, you know, uh, for, the, <laughs> for the innovation use case. So now let's talk about the APKM APIs. Uh, as I said, um, these are all trust-based APIs that we expose. Um, every functionality on the APKM has an API, uh, so there is no hidden communication. Uh, and uh, again, this helps a lot of our customers. So we have a lot of our customers who have been using these APIs uh, and uh, integrating with some of their existing tools. And the uh, one unique part is all of these APIs are governed by the uh, role-based access control um, uh, in the mechanism that we have on the APKM. So if, say, you are a user who has only an observer uh, privilege and you want to push a dynamic QS uh, policy, that's not going to be allowed. Now, if you go via the UI, yeah, that's blocked. 
we have the same credentials or the same RBAC system, which is uh, there for APIs as well. And I can show you a quick example of that, you know, how that works. So you first get a ticket, and then your ticket or your, a token, and the token is based on your credentials. And then using that, you are now able to create those um, you know, API calls, the post and the gets and puts. Um, so again, this is an, an, an example where you have to create a um, token for that. So that's based on your credentials. And then once you get that, uh, a service ticket, you are going to use that um, in the X auth uh, token header. Um, and we'll show you an example using Postman how, how you can do that. And then once you are uh, into, once you get the ticket, any subsequent calls will be using the same tickets. So that's uh, just a quick uh, example of that. Uh, this is an example of how you do it using a Python script, for example. Okay, so let's, um, before I go to the demo, just a quick, uh, you know, a, you know, one minute about the life cycle. So these APIs have been, I mean, you know, evolving over a period of time. We have made sure that all of the APIs are backward compatible. Uh, we have had some issues when we, you know, kind of initially released because we were for almost a year in, in EFT and then we went GA. But at that time, some of the APIs did change. But right now, we have made sure all of the API changes are backward compatible. And of course, we will keep adding new versions of the API. So once you go to a new version, of course, uh, these are not backward compatible. Um, when we release a new API, that's going to be available for at least a year. So it's not as if we are coming up with a new version uh, every two months. We don't want to do that. And we have tight governance within our engineering team to make sure all APIs are following these standards. Uh, lastly, uh, we will keep you know, deprecating APIs as and when new versions come out. And once we deprecate, you will get the appropriate response. So it will be supported for two years, even though the APIs are deprecated. But we will make sure you get the right response um, so that like, you as a developer would know that, OK, these APIs are deprecated. I need to move to a new version. Um, the API documentation. So uh, we are using Swagger um, on the APKM to do document our APIs. Uh, so these APIs, if you go to the APKM homepage or the user interface, these are there on the uh, homepage. It's the top right button. Click on API, and it uh, tells you, OK, here are all the listing of the APIs. Having said that, we have the APIs also documented on Cisco DevNet. So I will talk about DevNet towards the end. Um, uh, I know how our developers can leverage some of the work that, uh, or the great work that's been happening in DevNet. Uh, so the APIs are documented, and let's show a demo for that. And of course, the APIs, you have a try it out, and you have all the error static. So I mean, it'll give you exactly the code. Uh, so if something is wrong with your JSON input, it'll tell you why it's, something's wrong. So does this generate sample code? So right now, it doesn't sa generate sample code. Uh, but what we have is, if you go to DevNet, we have a lot of sample codes posted there. We have a GitHub repository where we have posted a lot of sample code. But I think your question is, say, if I'm doing plug and play via the user interface, is it, is it going to generate a sample code? Uh, that's not there today. Like Firepower, for example, there's yes. the Interactive API Explorer, so it's not quite that. No, yeah. So it's not there today. Uh, on So you will have to, yeah, there is no sample code. But as I said, we have posted a lot of sample codes in the GitHub repository. It's called Unique. If you go to DevNet, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll show that. So uh, they, we have all the sample codes there. And plus, we have a lot of uh, sample codes on DevNet itself. Um, I'll let me show that. So let's go to a quick demo of the controller. So um, this is the um, APKM uh, homepage. Now, this is the APKM 1.5 release. Um, but the, the, the DNS Center will look slightly different. I, I actually have it here. So this is a, this is a DNS Center page. And uh, similarly, here also, we'll have all the APIs documented. So if I go here on the API, uh, say API documentation, you'll see a listing of all the APIs that we have supported. Now, this, is, this list is growing, uh, but uh, every new functionality that we add we make sure we have the appropriate APIs listed for that. So let's take um, some small examples. Uh, say, for example, you look at the network inventory service. I click on in inventory. You'll see all of the various you know, APIs within that service. Um, I can take example of network device, for example, and you'll see all of these um, various API calls. So uh, post, put, delete, get, all of these methods are there. So these are HTTPS-based uh, APIs, and these are the URLs for that, right? So let's take a, take a very quick example. I do a get network device here. It gives me the full you know, you know, description of what that API does, and then uh, you know, it, it is going to you know, give you all the details of the you know, in, in error codes for that. Right. So these APIs are all, again, documented here. You can try it out yourself. 
and you can you can do that. So let's take a real use case that's much more you know useful. Uh, so um, let's if you go back to the presentation here for a moment, uh, one of the features that we have on the APKM is the path trace, right? So uh, path trace is so visualizing an application flow, end-to-end uh, -end application flow between two endpoints, right? So this could be end host, end clients, and um, some two valid IP addresses, and. Uh, Typically what happens is when you're having a path trace, uh, you don't know the port numbers for the application, right? I mean, uh, so if somebody gives you a call that, okay, my audio video call is not going through to a certain user, you might know the IP addresses of those endpoints, but you don't know what ports those traffic uh, is traveling on. So you will need to have an integration with some external system. So we have integration with, say, Cisco Call Manager. So if you're using Prime Collaboration, they do get the path information for the uh, audio video calls, and they are using APKM, and they are communicating with the APKM using our APIs, right? So this is the, you know, I mean, the flow analysis API, which you can use to uh, do the end-to-end -end call, right? So um, let's uh, take a quick example, uh, and let's do a uh, run of these APIs to see what how we can do that. I'm going to um, use uh, Postman. So let's try a live example. So uh, I need to create a ticket first. So I'm going to be using, uh, let's increase the font here. So that it's much more example. OK. So uh, this is the mm, mm, API ticket. I'm going to be using a different, um, and this is a credential. So if I do uh, send this. You, we are going to get a new service ticket. So this is a new service ticket that, in, that I need to be using for any subsequent API calls that I make. So I'm going to co copy it on my notepad. Because now you're authenticated, right? I have, I have now completely yeah, authenticated. So this is my ticket, and this is valid for six hours. <coughs> for how long? For six hours. OK. And, and you can change those numbers, right? So, so these values are configurable. I think default is six hours for that, right? So once you do that, now let's go and make a uh, path trace call. So I'll make a post API call. Uh, to flow analysis, right? So this is my path trace call, and of course the body will have a change. Here I'm going to use the source IP, and I need to find out the source IP. So if I go to the controller here, I look. So this is the 246 controller here, and these are the two IP addresses for the source. So if I go back here, I look at this. So this is one of the IP addresses, and then I'm going to say the destination IP and 61. And then I'm going to give the port numbers here. So source port, and I'm here I'm just picking up something in, at random. Uh, but when you're integrating with an application, they are able to get their own port numbers, and they will uh, use that. So. And we will need the. Uh, we will need the protocol information as well. Five tuple, right? Yep, this is a five tuple. So this is a five tuple that we are going to be passing, uh, and this should generate a path trace <coughs> request, right? So I'm using the flow analysis API, and the one thing which I missed is I, have, I need to add the authentication token here, which I got. So I take that, and I have saved it in my notepad somewhere. This is the one. So I add this value. Right. For the heck of it, this, let me make this something wrong, right? I'll just make CAX instead of CAS. So if I send this, it tells me this is ticket is not recognized. So this is a wrong ticket. Uh, this didn't work, right? Yeah. So just to show that it's you know, happening. And then I make it the real one, and I send this. And again, the, and the, the body is the five tuple I'm sending, right? For the flow analysis API, I take this. And OK, I made a typo here. It's destination port, not destination IP. And I send this. So you see, I got a flow analysis ADI, um, ID. So this is my ID. And one thing which you observe here is we also have a task ID. Task ID. So when you're making API calls, some of these API calls, like in the case of a path trace, might take long. It might take 15, 20 seconds, because if you, if you have a large network, it has to go through each network device, hop through it. And if you have ECMP in the network, it has to pull the network device real time. So it needs to get that. So the task um, ID gives you the information about what is the status of your API call. right? So it gives you the start time, end time, and it also tells you where we are with the API call. So that's an uh, no, important thing that we need to note because, uh, of course, some of these calls will not happen Im immediately. So now I copy this flow analysis ID, and I'll just do a get on this. 
So if I send this information, you'll see this is my path trace, right? So it tells you the full output, right? And it, it tells you, okay, this is a source IP, destination IP, this is my ingress port, so it's, this traffic is switched, it comes to this switch called BR access one, it gives me all the details about the ingress interface, the egress interface, and again, it goes to the next distribution switch, gives all of that information. So this is the end-to-end -end flow, uh, or this is the end-to-end -end JSON output of your path trace. Now, contrast this with something which I go back to the controller, and I do a path trace live, something for the same same ports. Oh, sorry, yeah, and I just say, well, I'll use the same values, and I say TCP, right? And if I do this, again, this will take a few seconds. It should give me a path trace, and this is how it looks like. So this is the beautified version. This is the UI, yeah. and this gives you the full end-to-end -end path. And again, I made a very simple path trace. I could have chosen to give me stats as well, so it will tell you the ingress, egress stats, the QoS stats, the ACLs along the path. It gives me all those details. But this is how it looks like in the UI, and this is what we are using, the exact same call. And if, it, if I take a look at the API, this is the output. This is the real output that we're taking, and once your user interface is going to you know, present that in a much more, um, uh, in a much more better format, mm -hmm. which, is, which will be much more easily comprehensible to the users. Right, so that's one example. Um, um, I'll show, I'll come back to Dynamic QoS later because that is one very important example where a lot of our partners are collaborating with APKM or using the APKM APIs to push Dynamic QoS APIs. But before I do that, I want to show something more in this uh, use case where we are trying to read information. Now, one thing on the APKM is all of the features that we have on the APKM, we make sure we have an API for that, so nothing is hidden. Having said that, um, you might also want to see sometimes where if there are some issues on the network which APKM is not collecting. So we are one of our partners, they wanted to see what is the for this for the status of multicast in my network. We don't do anything with multicast today. Not right now. We are we, we are working on that. But if I want to collect some multicast routing table information, how do I do that? Right? So um, we want to be able to do it kind of uh, via a, the config. So we will be able to be sending show CLI commands, and the APKM will then go and do the network devices, execute the CLIs, and give it back to you. So it's much simpler. Again, this is just for read only, operational data only. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to allow you to configure anything, because anything you configure will have to go as the APKM policy engine. Um, so uh, this is what we already have. So let's do a very quick example. Um, so if I go to the controller here, to my APKM, and I want to show you a quick demo of the command run, and then I'll show you how, uh, how we integrate that with the scripts, for example. So if I take these two devices, oh, this doesn't have a command run, okay, no worries. <laughs> um, so uh, you are then able to read, uh, so if I go back to a different controller here, for example, okay, um, and I look at two devices, this has, uh, where is command run? This has command runner here, and I say I want to read the show IP interface brief, for example, and I do add this, run. And this will again take uh, its time, it's going to do, log into this individual devices and do that. So now if I click on this, it gives you the full output, right? This you can do by APIs as well. And again, I mean, the beauty of this is you might be running this command on 100 different devices. You don't have to log into each of these devices, telnet, SSH, or do any of that. Make a single API call to the APKM, APKM does it for you, right? So. Uh, if, I, if I did a packet capture of what the APIC EM just did, did it SSH into the device and actually run that command and do screen scraping, or did it send an API call to the device? So that it depends uh, on the device type. So like for example, APIC EM currently has support for 3750X switch. Now 3750X is not supporting NetCon with the Yang models today. So what we do in that case, we will CLI, uh, we will SSH or Telnet to the device, whatever is done, and then we will do it, uh, do a, execute the command, show IP, whatever the command is, and same thing for, for provisioning, right? So if it supports NetCon, uh, like the output looks like CLI output. No, no, yeah, in, in this case it is CLI because we are pushing just CLI. So right now the command runner is supporting just CLI output for both, um, actually just for reading. Uh, commands from the command outputs from the switches. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's in the roadmap where we will start supporting um, Yang models both uh, for you know reading the telemetry information back from the network devices. It's not there today. Gotcha. Yeah. 
So um, let's take, uh, so, we, so we did this using the user interface. Now how, how about I integrate some of this with our existing switch or so, say my script. So I'm going to show here, so if I, and let me increase the font. Okay, so if I come back here, I go to my desktop, I have a scripts directory, and I say Python command runner, right? So this is going to tell me, give me the host IP address. I mean, this is just a script, simple script that we wrote. And my username is Saurav, and you all know my password now. And, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. And this, and I'll say, let's get me the show, show version, for example. Uh, show IP, that's much easier. Right, so this is going to run. Device ID is not present. Okay, one second. Oh, sorry, I chose it on uh, same thing. And I should choose ten dot two five five one dot five. And let me choose another con uh, IP address from here. So ten one seven dot one. Just pick that. 1.7.1, and I say show IP interface brief, right? So this will is going, um, sending an API call to the APKM, and this is all the information you got from these devices, right? So mm -hmm. again, think about it. If you have a larger network, um, this is makes it so much easier to get all the information mm -hmm. back. And also, I, I have done a very simplistic use case where I have just punched in the IP addresses of the devices. But what you could have done is you could have tagged these devices to a certain location or a region. So on DNS Center, we have support for sites. You could have said, okay, for this site, give me the show IP interface brief or some command, whatever. And then you can parse it. We have libraries in Google, uh, which they, they have libraries for parsing some of this uh, Cisco command. So we can use that and it's much simpler to get all of the information. Again, for information that is not uh, which is collected by the DNS center, right? I mean, and there are some use cases for which we can do that. Um, so that's one example of how you can use the APIs to automate some of the collection that you're doing from a network and also, um, next, next let me show something more interesting and exciting. Um, I know I'm running short of time, but I'll quickly show you that. Um, so if I go uh, to my APKM, uh, I want to do a dynamic US call. Right, uh, API call. So let's go to the switch. Okay, I'll type in set. Okay. So this is a switch um, which I have. Uh, okay. And this is my, if I do a show IP interface brief, include up, I'll see this interfaces, and I'll have some policies applied on this interface here, right? Okay, so there's an ingress policy and an egress policy applied. What I want to do is I want to push a dynamic QS call for doing a voice or a video uh, flow. So let's just uh, do a very simple call. I go back here, and I will first have to do a <laughs> generate a ticket. Okay, let's see which one is that, okay. Right, and here again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to generate a ticket. I got this ticket. I'll save it in my desktop here. First one, okay. And now, let's make a call. So I'll say, this is policy dash flow. And here is where I have to give all this information. So I have to again give the source IP address, uh, which is 172.28.97.64. And then I give the destination IP address. And 61, right. So this gives the destination IP address. And then I need to give the port numbers here. Okay. And protocol, UDP. And now I, I need to get the flow type because this is going to create a policy for a voice flow or a video flow. So it's going to be flow type, and I'll let's say voice here. All right, so this was created, and this is the same JSON. So I'll use the cut and paste from here. Go back to the header. I'm going to say X authentication token, okay. and I paste it here. 
That's it, as simple as that. Now when I send it, so it created, uh, so this was the body, it did, it already did. If I go back to my switch, <coughs> if you see that the configuration should have changed, let's see. Let's go to the APKM to see the real thing. Go here. Go to advanced settings and go to dynamic course. You can see there's a policy created already here, right? So, um, um, so this policy was created. Similarly, if I want to delete this, I, I can delete this policy via the API. Again, what's the use case here? So we already have integration with Cisco Call Manager. Now Cisco Call Manager is a Cisco, Cisco product, so they know our APIs. So if you go to Call Manager, go under HTTP profile, you'll be able to provision the APKM IP address and the credentials for that. So whenever there's a Jabber call being set up, COCM sends an API call to the APKM. Again, I mean, the beauty of this is you're only giving the IP address of the source endpoint. You don't know where is this connected to. Is, is it connected to a switch or a uh, which interface on a switch? What type of switch it is? Those CLIs are different. We will take care of all of that. Oh, next is uh, now uh, when you want to delete it, the call ends, you can delete that. Now that's something which we have done for Cisco. We have a lot of partners, partners such as Nectar, partners such as uh, in Italtel in Europe. They have integrated using uh, these APIs with other non-Cisco collaborations providers like Microsoft Sky for Business or Avaya or things like that. So they have already done that. Um, and uh, if I have time, I can show some of the slides for that. Right. So that's just a very brief example of some of the APIs. Uh, next, I want to talk about, say, if you have partners who want to start using it, how do they use it? Um, so um, as I said, we, we have those APIs documented on the controller. Uh, so these are there. Uh, but again, if you want to start using it without having to install a controller, how do we do that? So you go to DevNet, you go to developer.cisco.com, and we have a portal for DNA there. We have a portal, and inside that, you'll see the portals for the various components of DNA. For APKM, for the controller, we have APIs listed. So there's a bunch of information. There's some t tutorials, sample codes, the API documentation. This is the same documentation that you have on the controller is listed there as well. And uh, then we have blogs, how-to articles. Uh, we have a sandbox there. Actually, multiple sandbox. Some of these sandboxes are always on sandbox. Some of these uh, sandboxes are reservation based. So you need to reserve your time. And then you have your own APKM in the sandbox. And you can play around. Sir, uh, the what version of APIC EM were you just working against? I was working against 1.4. Okay. Yeah, 1.5 just got released yesterday, so I didn't have to time okay. to Is there a time frame for getting that in the sandboxes? Uh, the sandbox should have 1.4. But I mean, is there a time frame for 1.5? Oh, 1.5, yeah, it, it, it generally takes one to two weeks uh, because once the code is out, uh, we'll have to, uh, get, um, the DevNet guys will have to upload that. And also, we have a mm, mock database because some of these always on setups. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we can replicate that you know, any number of times as based on users. So we have to create a mock database for that, uh, for the APIs to work. Okay, but it won't be long. Oh, no, no, it's not going to be long. No, no, no. We, we generally do at least, it takes at the most a couple of weeks. I know we are all in Cisco Live here, um, myself included, and the DevNet guys. So sure. I, I, I hope it's not be more than two weeks, but that's what it is. Okay, and there right? was one more question that came in from Twitter, which was, uh, Steve Rodriguez wanted to know if when you're using the command runner, yeah. does that allow you to put in the pipe key and other options for yes. filtering? Yes, it does. Great, yes, thank you. Does, yeah. um, so uh, just want to show you some of the proof of values, right, now what are some of the customers. So there's a partner called AnyWeb. So we talked about multicast. They want to be able to reach and you know, learn all the multicast uh, tables from the devices, and they are using the command runner to do that. Uh, similarly, there is a, um, I mean, Italtel, they are doing call admission control. So uh, they are able to get the usage information about the flow, about the interface, and based on that, then they're able to uh, revert back to the call manager and say, okay, you cannot let any more calls happen on this. Again, they're using all of the APIs from the APKM. Nectar, similarly, they do dynamic policies for Cisco calls for, uh, I mean, Avaya, Microsoft Skype for Business. They are using the policy APIs on the APKM. Lastly, uh, we have live, live action. They have a booth. They're demoing this where they are actually doing the monitoring on the network, but at the same time, they need to get the full network information. Um, so the inventory, the topology information, they, they talk to APKM. It's a single API call. You get the entire network, entire topology information.